the Hessian. So we've done all this stuff with quadratic forms, and we've sort of extensively studied the definiteness of quadratic forms, and we saw a few different ways to do it. Uh, the first place where we were exposed to definiteness was via the spectral theorem, which said that the eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix control definiteness. And then we've also seen the Koleski uh, situation, where actually an LDL transpose um, the diagonal entries of D give us the definiteness of our real symmetric matrix, which is perhaps a more efficient way of figuring out definiteness. But the question still remains, why do we care about definiteness in the first place? And one of the best answers is in the theory of the Hessian derivative of a scalar field. So in order to discuss the Hessian, we have to discuss second derivatives. So let's do a quick Calc 1 review. Remember, in single variable calculus, the second derivative can measure concavity. So if you're concave up, one way this could happen is if your second derivative is greater than zero. Remember, this is a sufficient condition, but this is not necessary. You can certainly have a zero second derivative and be concave up. But if you know that your second derivative is positive, that means your function is concave up. Uh, you could also have concave down functions. This would happen if your uh, second derivative is negative. Again, this is sufficient, but not necessary. You could certainly have a zero second derivative and still be concave down. But if you know your second derivative is negative, you know your function is concave down. Um, now, there is a third situation, which is the so-called inflection point. This would occur if your second derivative equals zero, but um, that is not a necessary condition. So these are sort of three generic shapes one bumps into when one studies calculus. You think of concave up as being associated with a positive second derivative, concave down being associated with a uh, negative second derivative, and inflection points being associated with a zero uh, uh, second derivative. Now, um, let's dig a little bit deeper here and recall the theory of Taylor polynomials. So remember, the second degree Taylor polynomial of a function f of x at x equals p is given by t2 of x equals f of p plus f prime of p times x minus p. That first part is the linear uh, local linearization of our function. But then we add this new term, 1 over 2 factorial times the second derivative of f evaluated at p times x minus p squared. Now, the idea here is that the first derivative can, controls the variation of the function at p. So that's whether the function is increasing or decreasing. And the second derivative here controls concavity. Now, um, the idea is that we can use this quadratic to approximate values of f near x equals p. Our approximation, if we wanted to improve on our linear approximation, we would use f of p plus delta p equals f of p <coughs> plus f prime of p times delta p plus 1 over 2 factorial times f double prime of p times delta p squared. So this is sort of an improvement on a, a, a linear approximation with a quadratic approximation. Um, now, if the second derivative is equal to zero, one could move on to higher degree Taylor polynomials. We won't talk about any of that. So let's see a, an example. Here I'm looking at the function f of x equals 4 times e to the x minus 1 over 2 plus 2 at x equals 1. Now, one thing I could do is I could construct the local linearization at x equals 1. That's the good old tangent line. I'll call that t sub 1 of x in this situation, and that ends up being 6 plus 2 times x minus 1. But I could also use the quadratic approximation, that's the second degree Taylor polynomial, which I've plotted in green here, <coughs> and the formula for that is the linear approximation plus 1 over 2 factorial times quantity x minus 1 squared. So I have my linear and quadratic approximations here. And um, one thing I could use this information for is to approximate the value of f of 5 halves. Now, if I'm studying originally at x equals 1 and I'm moving to 5 halves, my delta p here will be 5 halves minus 1, which is 3 halves. Now, I could use my linear approximation, which would say that f of 5 halves is approximately 6 plus 2 times the delta, which is 3 halves, which ends up equaling 9. Now, I can plot that approximation on my tangent line, and that gives me my red dot here. But alternatively, I could use the quadratic approximation. That would be the linear approximation, 6 plus 2 times the delta. But now this is plus 1 over 2 factorial times the delta squared, which ends up equaling 81 over 8. And I can plot that on my um, parabola here. 
and I see that this green dot is actually closer to the function than the red dot. So this is a visual representation of why the quadratic approximation is a bit is an improvement on the linear approximation in this situation. Um, now another thing that uh, we can use second derivatives for is orienting our error in a linear approximation. So if we know the concavity, I can tell you how in what direction you're off if you use a linear approximation. So if you use a linear approximation to approximate a function when the function is concave up, well, you can be reasonably confident that your linear approximation will be an underestimate. You can sort of see the tangent line is under the curve when you're concave up here. Of course, the situation is exactly the opposite if your function is concave down. If your function is concave down and you're using a linear approximation, you can see that the, uh, the tangent line is sort of above the curve, which means you can expect that your linear approximation will be an overestimate. And the third situation would be if you had an inflection point. Well, if you have an inflection point, the direction matters in this situation. In, this, in, in the figure we've depicted here, if we move a little to the right, we can see that perhaps we're an underestimate. But if we move to the left, perhaps we're an overestimate. So at inflection points, uh, the direction you're, you're traveling in matters. Whereas if you're concave up, you can reasonably expect your uh, uh, linear approximation to be an underestimate. And if you're concave down, you can reasonably expect your linear approximation to be an overestimate. 